everybody, um, you are listening to the History Boys. I am Christopher Whedon, and you know, I'm a history boy. I'm a history nice. girl. I'm a dairy girl. Ah, history girl. I'm a girl. G W O R. Girl, boy. Remember? Uh, yeah. Anyway, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Zach Mack, and I am also a history boy. Ooh. Should have prepared that one more. I just really trailed on. Yeah. <laughs> Still a little hungover, too, come to think of it. I've been doing dry mm. January. I'm drinking a non-alcoholic beer. N.A. Mm. Uh, yeah, po- yeah, I was posting these on the uh, Discord, which you could be mm. on for only $1 a month. Nice. Mm-hmm. Then you can yeah. find out. Otherwise, Hear about what you'll non-alcoholic never know. drink I'm drinking for the next... Eight Week. days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how you just checked your imaginary watch. <laughs> it, just, it just says Wednesday. <laughs> in permanent marker. <laughs> Written on your arm in, in permanent marker. Yeah, it's just a reminder. Yeah. <laughs> You can see fuck- like you can see a faded Tuesday underneath it. <laughs> I get fucked up there. Uh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Yeah. Oh, Who else we great. got? Okay, I am Maddie Moon, and I am a history boy and history guarol now. Yeah. Now, now that we've entered that into that guarol, what guarol? Yeah. Yeah. A history squirrel. Even yeah, better. Squirrel. I'm going to start introducing myself as a squirrel. Not in the show. You're a bit yeah. of a squirrel. <laughs> Just a I'm, a bit of a squir- I'm a bit of a squirrely guy. Yeah, yeah if you don't want people. Climbing up trees. Yeah. And me, dogs hate every me. Every time I meet new people. <laughs> dogs fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was on my uh, Tinder profile back in the day, that dogs hated me. Yeah. People I mean, didn't find it endearing. Yeah. No. I like dogs. Yeah. It's they all, like it's all those terrifying <laughs> sudden movements you keep making. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. And I, of course, am Jerry Nash, your humble history boy. Thank you so much for listening. This week, folks, we got a continuation of our last story, Mary Wollstonecraft. If you want to know more, then go back and listen to that one if you haven't already. This one is about... Mary Shelley. Ah. But she's not, during, during the course of today's episode, she's not even going to be Mary Shelley yet. She is mm. still, still Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin mm. at this point. Yeah, make that simpler. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll know. You'll know. <laughs> if only she knew somebody with the last name Shelley. <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> last we left you, the great Mary Wollstonecraft had died 11 days after giving birth to a baby girl on August 30th, 1797, who would be Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. Mm-hmm. Her husband, the anarchist philosopher William Godwin, was now a widower at the age of 41 with two daughters, Fanny Imlay, mm-hmm. uh, now Fanny Godwin, and uh, his own infant daughter, Mary. How old was Fanny at this point, you know? I think she was... Oh, five or six. Okay, so this was pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stuff happened very fast to these yeah. poor, poor people. <laughs> it had to back in the day. People didn't live long. Yeah. You yeah. had to cram a lot into those tiny little lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tiny little lives. Like tiny little lives for tiny British people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they drive Mini Coopers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's the only explanation I can think of. What? Yeah. Americans can't <laughs> fit into those cars. Yeah. No, I can't. Godwin adored his daughter, uh, Mary, the most. And Fanny was always second best. Yeah. And she knew it. She knew that she was second mm-hmm. best to his own daughter. Mm-hmm. Right? And he was stingy with his time, though. Like, he blocked out his own time where he had to be alone, you know? And they still had, like, the housekeepers and stuff when Mary died, you know. They, they still had Marguerite around. Mm-hmm. But he would, like, be, you know, lock himself in his office and he was not to be fucked with, you know, during this time. Where he, like... Don't, don't fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's me time. Yeah. And he, like... Re- time? Yeah. He, like, revived... Or revi- he revised his own work, you know, to say, like, well, marriage is a necessary evil, you know, because everyone right. called him a hypocrite. You right. Know? And so he was kind of revising some of his mm-hmm. his stuff, you know. Fanny, of course, she could kind of, with Marguerite and stuff, she could kind of have some connection to her mother, you know. Mm-hmm. Those were kind of her connections, were mm-hmm. like the house staff, you know. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They, they also had like the children's stories that Wollstonecraft had, had written for Fanny. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it was definitely, when you read them now, it's definitely like, you can see what a caring mother she mm. was, mm-hmm. you know, like they're very sweet they're stories. Like, okay. 
Not this Princess and the Pea shit. No, 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 it's... <laughs> <laughs> Princess and the P? Yeah. Hans, Hans, Hans Christian Hans, Anderson. Hans. Yeah. 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 I, Mr. Did Hans. You, I don't mean you... to go over the thing, but I would just say, why is it a good thing that this princess is so fucking weak? That she can feel know. the pee. Like, they're like, a true princess is such a fucking... Well, and so meek. So, and, so meek and delicate yeah. and yeah. gentle. Exactly. That this pee will disrupt her entire night's yeah. sleep. And it'll... Under a fucking 50,000 mattresses. Did, did you know, by the way, that uh, Hans Christian Andersen uh, stayed for like two weeks with Charles Dickens one time? No. Yeah. Uh, I, this didn't make it into the episode, but I'll tell you right now. <laughs> you overstayed his welcome. He's not a good house guest. And they were like, can you get this guy the fuck out of here? <laughs> it's like when Hunter S. Thompson lived with, uh, oh, what's his fucking Johnny name? Depp? No, no, I was going to say the guy, uh, fucking parrot head guy. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Margaritaville. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, he yeah. lived with Jimmy Buffett. And oh, like, know that. Shit. Trashed his shit and like, was just the worst. There's no way Hunter S. Thompson was a good house guy. Parrot head no. guy? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what they call head. fans yeah. of Jimmy Buffett. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. When you're living that Jimmy Buffett lifestyle. And you got to. You're yeah. a parrot head. And you know, yeah. you know Hunter wow. S. Thompson was fucking trashing his fucking... Uh, oh, yeah. He was really wasting away in, in Margaritaville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. actually doing it, not Jimmy yeah. Buffett. He took advantage Pretty much of took his... Uh, well, his salt pet shaker and fucking yeah, never fucked brought it off. Back. Never yeah. brought it back. Yeah, he's like, and this Jimmy is... Buffett. Buffett has been pining ever since. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, won't, he won't get over it. Yeah. He's like, You're, yeah, he wasn't living the Margaritaville lifestyle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. he, he's, he can't stay. Yeah, <laughs> it's very Came specific a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, anyway, now Godwin, he he would take Mary as a small girl. Down to uh, St. Pancras ch- uh, Churchyard mm-hmm. to visit the grave of Mary Is that Wilson near, Park. like, there's a hospital in London called... Like, St. Pancras? Is that there? Is that in that I'm, area? Probably. I'm, probably it's right it's, near it's, there. That's right by King's Cross, where they yeah. have that Harry Potter store, and you can get your yeah. picture taken it with the... And it's like, you got the brick wall, and the half the cart is going through it, uh, and it's like the nine, nine and fucking... Three, and nine you can take quarters. a picture, and there's a long fucking line. Yeah. Just take yeah. a picture at King's Cross. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of pickpockets there. Yeah. They warn you. I bet. Oh. They're like, put your, first of all, look like you know where you're going. Right. And secondly, put your wallet in your front pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That's good get advice. You. They'll get you. They don't have guns there like in the United States. Yeah. They got to be tricky. They got to be crafty. Uh, you got to say you can put a gun in somebody's face and be like, give me your money. And yeah. <laughs> easy peasy. Doesn't matter what pocket it's in. Well, uh, you got to get all, uh, they're getting it. Artful Dodger out there. Yeah. Artful Dodger. So they visited there all the time, you know, the, the headstone all the time. And that's how Mary learned to read was off her mother's headstone. Mm. Isn't that nuts? Like, your first word was like, cat or some shit. But like, hers was like, vindication. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say rest in peace. You know, <laughs> so was her first rights words. of women. Did it, say <laughs> a lot? Did it say a lot on there? Was it, it said, kind of it said Mary, Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin, you know, the years, an, the author of a vindication for the rights of women. Yeah. On it, there. Mm. You know, so like, that's how, like, you know, she grew up, like, basically in front of this... Did she read any of the other headstones, you know? I think that was just the one she yeah. hung out around. <laughs> just like, go around to, like, yeah. get some other education. Yeah, yeah learn some other Learn words. some other tombstones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I only know the words on this particular tombstone. And although Godwin had been a celebrity for his writing, mm-hmm. times were changing. The fact that the revolution, you know, the, the French Revolution failed... The fact that this sort of, you know, this type of rhetoric that he was pushing kind of became old hat subversive, where it's like, Mm -hmm. that's some bullshit that didn't work out. We don't even want to hear about it, you know, kind of Mm. a thing. Yeah. Mm. So only like the most ardent radicals and the most like, like the new romantics were the only ones that really cared about Wollstonecraft and Godwin going Mm -hmm. forward. You know what I mean? So people kind of abandoned him a little bit. What what appealed to the romantics, too, was this idea that this brick wall of idealism, like Wollstonecraft and, and Godwin, that they could also be susceptible and embody vulnerability and uh, vulnerability in love, you know what I mean, uh, in, in particular, and find beauty and healing out in nature, mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's kind of what, that's what gave them the whole idea for romanticism, right? And then, meanwhile, you know, William Wordsworth and, and Samuel Coleridge are off basically, uh, like, taking Mary Wollstonecraft and then, like, 
quote unquote inventing romanticism, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where that's coming from. <clears throat> so when people came to visit the Godwin household, which they did all the time, Mary kind of had to get used to people like going silent when she entered the room and like people mm. going like, oh my God, there she is. You know, the daughter of Wollstonecraft <laughs> and Godwin. <laughs> you it's know? like mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like she would come in and like they'd be like, oh my goodness. You know, wow, she looks just like her mom. You know? <laughs> Thankfully, nothing like Godwin. <laughs> yes, kind of yeah. what they oh. said because he's kind of an ugly dude. Yeah, thank God. That- yeah. They said that right in front of me. They're <laughs> <laughs> like, the yeah. point right in his fucking yeah. ugly ass face. Been like, thank God you don't look like this guy. Well, I think, I think, and I might, I don't think I'm mistaken, but I think like Godwin was like a 40 year old virgin. I think he was until oh, Wilson yeah. Craft. I think he was. I mean, yeah. you said he was an anarchist. Yeah. At at that age, <laughs> yeah, he was an ugly dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Uh, we're gonna make the wrong Hopefully people mad. Hopefully, there's no forty-year-old anarchist listening. To this yeah, like, he's got a fucking shitty mm-hmm. stick and poke face tattoo going on. Uh, he, uh, he, he probably has a beat-up mandolin somewhere that uh, plays in a shitty folk punk band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no, the people later. Uh, <laughs> and one such visitor. This is gonna blow your fucking mind. Oh my god. Tom One Hanks? such no. <laughs> <laughs> because okay, I'm not gonna, that crazy. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> that I would, would be shocked. That would blow my mind. Yeah. Uh, no is a man in self imposed exile because his career was uh, uh taking a nosedive, mm-hmm. let's put it nicely. Aaron Burr. Oh, really? Aaron Burr was was uh, he would come over to their house all the time and the girls mm-hmm. loved him. Mm-hmm. Uh, very much. They called they, you know, he called them the goddesses. You oh, know, yeah. weird. Oh. Yeah, he was a big fan of Wollstonecraft. That. Big oh, really? fan of Wollstonecraft and Godwin, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he came over all the time. They loved him. Yeah, you know, they play they, games with him. They were like, remember, tell us about that time you shot Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> the time you <laughs> shot a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Murdered that man in cold yeah. blood. <laughs> but uh, probably the most most important person that that came to to marry was, in fact, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Mm -hmm. um, the poet. His famous poems were Christabel, Kublai Khan, and The Rime of the Ancient Mm. Mariner. Ah, yes. Ah, yeah. Indeed. Uh, Which was Mary's favorite growing up, Mm -hmm. was that one. Weird spelling. So what... Yeah, it is. Uh, (laughs) So so what what it's about, in case you don't know, is it's about a, a, a mariner who... Kills an alb- albatross, a seabird, yeah. hmm. you know, and they, they get a they get a curse on them because yeah, yeah. he does this, and uh, he has to wear the albatross around his neck as mm-hmm. sort of a burden to lift the curse. It's right? uh, it's bad luck to kill a seabird. It is bad luck to kill a seabird. And here's a little best uh, let him be. Yeah, exactly. Here here's a quote from the uh, uh, from the rhyme of the ancient mariner. Quote: All in a hot copper sky. The bloody sun at noon right above the mast did stand. No bigger than the moon, day after day, day after day. We struck no breath nor motion upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Mm. Simpsons quote. reference. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they've seen that episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's referenced. Um, you know, he should have killed like a smaller seabird. <laughs> al- yeah. Those are albatross uh, big. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's like killing a Maine Coon and hanging that around your neck. Albatross is bigger. Probably. I think they're like bigger. the size of a human person. Yeah, like, yeah the, they're the, the biggest span. winged. Yeah, yeah. yeah they have the, the largest wingspan of any yeah. extent species. Yeah. Extant. 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 <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of extent. <clears throat> yeah. It's not a Quetzalcoatlus, you know? Yeah. <laughs> The those, stinct, those, not the extinct. Yeah, unstinct. <laughs> anyway. Not yet stinct. Yeah. <laughs> they smell fine. <laughs> the pleasantly scented. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever smelled an albatross? No. It smells That's great. why oh, he was wearing no a way this albatross smells good. Seabirds gotta be. A pelican? Oh, so stinky. Yeah. Oh, so, so stinky. stinky. You ever yeah. see when a pelican, like, yawns and you can, like... It's, you see all that yeah. You see, like, yeah. the insides and shit? Yeah, yeah. it, like... It's fucking weird. <laughs> it ejects its esophagus out of its body. That's disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. I yeah. made that up. I don't know if that's true. I think it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it is. I've like, seen a picture sad. of... The grossest of, thing. Yeah. Of, Gore or yeah. something? Uh, seabird. This is a seabird I don't know podcast. much about bird anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> seabird cast now. Yeah. Well, in 1801, the... the 
a lone widower Godwin. Because, like, you know, Coleridge even said, like, these girls, dude, they, they need, like, a, a, a female touch, dude. You're yeah, not giving them what they need, you know? Yeah. So he, he found this woman. She, she was living next door, and that was by design. She moved in next door because she knew that Godwin was a, a widower. Uh, I was uh, thinking that he just didn't go. He's like, well, you. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. He walked into uh, it, his front lawn. He's like, ah, you. So this woman, Come here. This woman next door. Raise my girls. <laughs> <laughs> this, there's a, now, 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 listen, guys. There, the, there's a lot of Marys and there's a lot of Janes in this, but but trust me, oh I'll, I'll 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 make sure you mm-hmm. understand the difference. Okay, her name was Mary Jane Claremont. Okay, she lived next door. She was really uh, well educated. Uh, she had two children by two different men. Mm-hmm. Godwin, of course, he, you know, he he never really judged, right? He didn't judge Mary for having children out of wedlock and sort of by different men and that mm. kind of thing. You know, he didn't really judge. Mary Shelley writes about Mary Jane later. She basically has nothing good to say about her. <laughs> she hates her. Really? You know, yeah. and you'll understand why. She didn't even kill her, uh, but, Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the truth of the matter is that Mary Jane really had, she was a pretty strong person in her own right. Her first husband was a French soldier who was tragically killed mm. uh, during the Revolution, and that was with her first child, Charles, I believe, was with him. Then there was another guy, uh, he was a scoundrel, he ran away, so she had a daughter with him, Jane. Mm -hmm. She even did time in a debtor's prison with two children. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, she was not to be fucked with, you know what I mean? She'd kind of seen some shit. She got hard in debtor's prison. (laughs) She did, and and now she was like really, you know, going forward, she was like, I'm going to be financially stable, you know what I mean? That's what my... Life's focus is going to be about. She was hard like Ice Cube in the early 90s at first and then became Ice Cube now. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Same life trajectory. (laughs) She's Ice Cube is what I'm saying. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) She had read Godwin's work, you know, as much of it as she could stand, I suppose, (laughs) and uh, moved in next door. You're like, I did my best, man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Come on. It's kind of all over the place. Uh, But, uh, yeah, she moved in next door. And Godwin, being Godwin, who who was susceptible to flattery, uh, she was like outside, and Godwin like came to like his window, and she was like, "Is that the immortal Godwin I see?" <laughs> and he was like, He's like you got it, he was right? like, "You got, yeah, exactly, you got it, right? <laughs> you know." And so like for a while, they kind of kept their you know affair a secret from their friends. That's kind of what you had to do back mm. in the day. But they got married in kind of a secret ceremony. You know, a one-day honeymoon. Then they mm-hmm. came back, and they were like, "We're gonna move in together and meet your new mommy." You know, and so he married her. Yeah, he mm-hmm. married her, Mary Jane. So okay, because I thought he was all anti-marriage. Well, not anymore. Because remember, he revised his work, and he it's was okay like, to get married. "Yeah, well, marrying is a it's a necessary evil in these unenlightened times." Because him and and Mary Wilsoncraft were never officially married, right? They were. And that's why they they got like a bunch of backlash from right, people. Yeah, yeah. And people called him, you know, oh, him. Right. They called them both hypocrites. And I shit. feel like right. though, if they didn't get right, married, right, right. Yeah. they would get even more backlash. Right. right? It was so like it's probably it's like a calculated 22. move. It's like yeah. What's the amount of backlash? Like, well, okay. from which side do you want? To do you want to be a on? hypocrite or do you yeah. want to be like an unwed? Yeah, uh, right. couple. Right. Right. It's like probably <laughs> like let's go with the hypocrisy. That's yeah. probably let's go with that. It's not <laughs> that at as least bad. you can keep your friends. <laughs> being a hypocrite is still of. not as bad as being an unwed uh, mother yep. and father. Somehow you know? that's easier to explain away. Yeah. <laughs> right? Society was different, man. Yeah. It was yeah. different, and especially in England. You know, it was different. So they yeah they got together. Uh, Mary and Fanny they didn't want a new mommy. You know no. what I mean? And they didn't want somebody somebody to like replace Wollstonecraft. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And to add to it, the Claremont children were loud and like mm. they ran around a lot and fuck shit up a lot. Mm. Whereas like Fanny and Mary were very like quiet, mm. you know, they 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 were taught by like the stern Godwin who was like, You have to learn all this shit in order mm. to be like a well rounded person, you know, never forget you gotta do your Latin and your Greek and you know, all this stuff, you know. Mm. 
So like they they were like thinking children. Yeah, <laughs> the Claremont's not so much. <laughs> you kids are running wild. Hooligans. Yeah. That's yeah. so why kids these days they they don't know their Latin and Greek running no. wild. Yeah, sure. they're running wild. <laughs> Ever since they stopped teaching that in school, yeah. 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 Society has gone downhill. That was the end downhill. of society. It's gone downhill. <laughs> school slope. shootings. No. <laughs> yeah. They started the year they took Latin. <laughs> <laughs> Those dead languages <laughs> um, took them out of school. Yeah, and like Jane would like cry a lot for not getting like attention and mary was always like oh for god's sake <laughs> you know and like uh she didn't like the fact that like her father was taken by mary jane now mm-hmm. and like fanny was always sort of quiet and always kind of want to like stay out of it mm-hmm. but mary like he's like she saw that like her favoritism was taken away to this other woman this mary mm-hmm. jane woman and mary jane saw it too and she was like this little girl is going to be a threat to me <laughs> you know it's a real um parent trap situation it is mm. <laughs> when the stepmom comes yeah. in and she's like yeah. yeah and she she banned the wollstonecraft name from the household you couldn't talk about mary wollstonecraft what holy yeah. evil stepmother oh yeah dude. jesus christ she she would you come down on what they were reading you know, any, anything like that. If they were caught with Wollstonecraft books, like, she'd get mad. She Their was, mom's books? Wow. Yeah. She was the type of person that would, like, slam doors and, like, tear up letters. Mm-hmm. And, like, she was definitely a Karen. She would make public <laughs> scenes. Public <laughs> scenes. And, like, people would be like, can you please calm down? She's like, no, they deserve, like, what I'm telling them. Oh, they need to no. know this. You know, she was a Karen, oh, for sure. God. And they did not like that. They were like, hey, we're... We're quiet and contemplative around here. And she just, yes. <laughs> you know, she was not that. <laughs> you know? You're too loud. Yeah, yeah. Regular piece of fucking yeah. shit. Ew. Yeah. What she was. Sounds and, like it. Man, and Mary hated her. Mm-hmm. Hated her. Like, Fanny kind of wanted to keep the peace, but Mary could not stand her. Yeah. And as she grew older, just the more and more she rebelled against her stepmother. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Now, Mary Jane, she told Godwin, she's like, y- you got to stop writing this ridiculous philosophy shit that no one's going to read. You actually, you actually got to make money, okay? Mm-hmm. So write something better. And he's like, no, I will not sacrifice my, you know, philosophy for da 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 mm-hmm. She's like, okay, well, then we're going to open a bookstore to, to get money yeah. uh, that will specialize in children's books because it was an emerging market at the time. Mm. Mm. So that's what they did. And they actually never really totally broke even. They had to borrow money to keep it going. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but that was their business mm-hmm. right? during this time. The girls would work at the bookshop. You know, if you have parents that own their own business, uh, chances are you also worked at their, at their business like me. Mm. Uh, Still is a thing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a lot of people, yeah. Now, Mary Godwin, she got a really good education between mm-hmm. her father, uh, her governess, and, like, she went to a boarding school for a short time because I think Mary Jane was trying to get her away. Uh, but she came back and she, she, you know, learned Latin, Greek, German, French, you know, all those things. She knew all those languages as, mm-hmm. as a teenager, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was pretty well educated, more so than most uh, girls mm-hmm. of, of the time. But, yeah, uh, Mary and Mary Jane, they would be at odds with each other. Like, the whole time. Any mm-hmm. any chance to kind of get underneath each other's skin, they would do that. When Coleridge came over and, and visited, you know, Mary Jane was like, you go to your room. Mm-hmm. Right? But, like, Mary, like, she was like, this is like my dad's favorite, like, my favorite friend of my dad's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, the kind you sort of look forward to them coming over. Because he's always going to tell you stories and stuff. And, yeah. Right. You know? And when she was sent to bed, when he was going to read her favorite, you know, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner... She, like, snuck back down. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when Mary Jane caught her, they, she, like, threw her back upstairs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, Man. that is, like, definitely driving a wedge. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know? seriously. Yeah. Definitely driving a wedge. Oof. So, at the age of 15, it was decided that Mary was going to go live with some uh, also radical thinking friends up in Scotland. Mm. These guys, they, they were into... Scottish independence. Okay. Mm. You know what I mean? That was dangerous back yeah. then. Still sort of is now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she went to stay with uh, with this family up there. Their names... Well, uh, well the, the, the patriarch of the family up there was William Baxter. Mm. And he had four daughters. And two of them were uh, Mary's age. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that was, uh, I believe, Catherine and Isabel. Isabel she was like best friends with. Mm-hmm. Best mm. friends with Isabel. And actually on, the, on her way up, like, Godwin sent her there alone. 
mm. like on on like a steamer up there. You'll be fine. And he like well he found some lady like hey can you watch my daughter? <laughs> and like the lady like the second the boat pulled out the lady disappeared. Yeah, that's what I mean. And like as she was sleeping on the boat she had all of her money stolen from her. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So she got there with nothing, you know, but the family was very nice to her, you know, and like they read Wollstonecraft, you know, they read all this like dangerous political, you know, da, 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 Mm -hmm. and they loved it, you know, and she received a lot of education up there. It was way different than London, Scotland was, Mm -hmm. you know, like (laughs) Europe in the highlands, you know, like just a different scene, man. And she loved it. She Mm -hmm. loved it up there. And like, she considered it like her in a romantic sense, like, opening up her, her mind to, like, mm. the earth and mm. nature and things like that, hmm. you know? Yeah, I can get that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every time I've been up in Scotland, it's, just like, so fucking beautiful and you, you just can't... can't imagine why we left. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, like from living, like, it's such an idyllic life well because, but then but then also yeah. it's like wait a minute my i have shitty cell service yeah. and the internet is way too slow now i know why we left yeah, yeah. well my ancestors left because uh you know their religious views were just too fucking bonkers so yeah. they had to go somewhere else yes you're like people won't, don't like it when we tell them what to do yeah <laughs> i hate that people. well they were uh, my family were, were like i've heard about this guy this Joseph Smith character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I hear he has it going on. I've got heard a magic rock. what yeah. he's about. He's got some magic plates that none of us can see. Yeah. Except for him. Yeah. And even then, and he only reads out of a hat. That sounds <laughs> anyway. legitimate. Yeah. yeah, no. It. <laughs> you go back over it, like the South Park thing is almost spot on. Yeah, you know, yeah, 100% yeah. almost. Anyway, anyway. That's a story for another day. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, the first time... Mary went to Scotland. Jane got bored without Mary being around because they kind of had a friendly rivalry as siblings, but they also got along really well. But they they would kind of come close together, then they would want to be apart from each other, then they'd come back. You know, they kind of did this their whole life. Mm-hmm. So Jane pretended she was sick, and Mary came back. She wasn't sick. Mary went back to Scotland, right? Mm-hmm. It was sometime in here that Mary met this Sadly. young man this dashing well not dashing he was sort of frazzled he was skinny he had wild hair um, Tim Burton he was a little crazy <laughs> yeah yeah okay. uh, Tim Burton wishes yeah uh, but it was uh, not dashing the rising star of romantic poetry Percy Bysshe Shelley ah um Bish? 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 Yeah. Bysshe Bysshe B-Y-S-S-S H E. Bish, please. Bish. Percy okay. Bish Shelley. Bish. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really do that. Use that one anymore. Yeah. No. Bish? I say that all the time. Bish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you say the man's name all the time. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's... I'm referencing Percy Shelley. For sure. Percy Shelley. Percy Shelley. Bish Shelley. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Can you take a break? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to pee. I got pee pee. Uh, okay. I drank a bunch oh my God. of uh, not alcohol. Is that going to be this? A little bit. It's the romantic era. It's the romantic era. All right. It's all about loving too much. We are. And too often. Rolling. And too roughly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not far off. <laughs> now, Percy Shelley was mm-hmm. born on August 4th, 1792. Ah, day Leo. after mm-hmm. my birthday. Uh huh. I like. Is that a thing we do? <laughs> we say that. Yes. Like, yeah. We do. What what <laughs> astrological sign there? <laughs> He's Leo. I will yeah. do that. When was Mary Shelley born? <laughs> I'll absolutely do that from now on. Mary oh, yeah, Shelley we was like fucking... born August 30th. So, so she's also a Virgo. Really Virgo. Which oh you no, said she's last Virgo. podcast. I think we did say that. I think you said that. Good. I'm we got them all. <laughs> We're up to date. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was born to Sir Timothy Shelley. He was a member of the Whig Party. He was a uh, Timothy MP. Chalamet. I literally thought the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> Why? Uh, Sir Timothy Sir Chalamet. Sir Timothy <laughs> Chalamet. <Why is> <laughs> uh, no, that's M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, okay, sure. Speaking of Timothy... Sir M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Sure. Now, Percy was a hellion. Cool. He was a hellion. Sweet. Yeah. Some kids, are, he's a little hellion. He's like, no, not like Percy. He's like Bart Simpson. 
He was no, worse than Bart like, Sim- uh, Sim- Simpson. Well, Bart Simpson always learned his lesson by the end of the episode. Dennis Percy the Menace. Did not. Percy the Hellion, Dennis the Menace. <laughs> 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 Side characters. He was always getting into trouble, uh, which created uh, a big rift between him, him and his father, Cole. Uh, Sir Timothy. Was his father very, uh, I don't know, an asshole? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking square. They were noble, you know, he was a British MP. Mm. Yeah, he, he was a square, yeah. for sure. His son mm. was, like I said, a hellion. The reason why he was a hellion, and I use mm. that word, is because he was a pyro. Cool. Like, he set fire to nice. a bunch of shit. Uh, he set fire to the butler one time. Fuck <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love this game. Yeah. That's rock and roll. Yeah. Okay, he was listening to Wasp the yeah. entire time. <laughs> He blew up shit with gunpowder all the time. Oh, man. Like, he blew up a fence one time. Wow. He blew up a bunch of shit with gunpowder. Like, he liked doing that. He set fire to the house, almost burning it to the ground one time. And instead of being sorry for it, he was kind of mad that he didn't burn the whole thing down. <laughs> you were like, did you ever have these friends when you were a kid who were like, they were like the wild kid, like... Oh, yeah. And oh, a lot of times yeah. it was like the mom was either poor or like, usually single mother. They're trying to right? get attention. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah. Like, the kid would just go away for a while. Like, a yeah. year. Yeah. Like just come back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I never knew where they were. It had to be some Reform. sort of hellion school. Yeah, reform you know? school. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Like, I'm sure. Yeah, like, I guess yeah. I didn't ask, because I didn't... I mean, I didn't care. I didn't, oh. like, <laughs> I didn't give a shit. It was like, yeah. oh, fucking... <laughs> Devin's back. Yeah. That's not... The kid I'm thinking of, that's not his name. I made up a name. Yeah. Because there, I can't remember is, his name. Yeah, Devin, Devin Fitz, though. Yeah, yeah. Devin. <laughs> I, I, I knew a Devin that was like Maybe that. it was. I can't remember his name. Maybe he it was lived a very tragic It's very life. close to the name Devil. Yeah. yeah. He lived a very tragic life. How did life. I not notice that? <laughs> yeah. It's one, it's anyway. one fucking letter. Two letter. Two letter. Oh. It's two letter. I thought it was spelled D-E-V-I-N. Those are the really bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he was sent off to boarding schools that he hated, especially these English boarding schools. He got mob bullied as a kid. He was this kind of meek, scrawny kid. He got bullied because there's there's this thing, and if you've ever seen, I I recommend this movie to you now, uh, Lindsay Anderson's movie If with a four a four dot ellipses by it. I don't know why four dots. Interesting. Uh, it's with Malcolm McDowell, and it's about English boarding school and how mm. the older like senior students they recruit younger students to be like their like their you know lackeys mm-hmm. and like their mm. go-betweens and there is like some like homosexual things yeah. that sometimes happen so that coming right yeah and they called it at this time and i'm only gonna use it once here because it is offensive it's an offensive term mm. um but they called it fagging oh. at this time um, yeah. To have these underlings, sort of, you know, underclassmen mm-hmm. huh. underneath you. Wow. He did not want to take part in this, and so he was bullied uh, relentlessly. And he even told Mary later on that, like, my father locked me away in an insane asylum. And it wasn't, he wasn't, okay. but he may as well have been. And that was kind of his sense of humor. Yeah. Mm. That was like his sense of, uh, he had a very yes. ironic sort of sense of humor as well. Not everyone understood it. He was really into, like, the occult and ghosts cool. and uh, science and electricity, but they kind of went together at this time. So he's Dan yeah. Aykroyd. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, w- that all kind of went together at this time. Science mm-hmm. and the occult and ghosts yeah, and things sense. like that. Yeah. That went together. He would uh, terrorize his, his younger sisters with like ghost stories and like he'd pop out, you know, and yeah. scare them, you know, spook them. Yeah. Uh, he would spook do that. the shit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> Bogums. I love that word. Yeah, and oh. when he when he went off to uh, Oxford, him and his buddy Thomas Hogg, nice. uh, they uh, <laughs> he didn't have a very big hog though. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the guy at the his pet pig. I, pe- I, I, no, I was talking about his penis. Oh, he would have been played by. Uh... You thought it was like... no, I didn't. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> He would have played. Oh, what's the guy's name from Animal House? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Belushi? Belushi. Belushi. Yeah. John Belushi. <laughs> John Belushi. Yeah, Thomas Hogg. Yeah. yeah, they got thrown out. Him and Thomas Hogg got thrown out of Oxford because cool. they they wrote and published this um, searing treatise on uh, Christianity oh, and why yeah. they hated it and why they were atheists. Cool. And that was enough. Just being an atheist was they like enough. Na- they were like National Lampoons. <laughs> <laughs> 
it also, was a, it they was enough made to get him tossed out. I didn't do that on purpose. But. I thought you did. I definitely That was actually it. But yeah, it was enough to get him kicked out of Oxford, being an atheist. It was enough. And his father hated that, too. Oh, my son's an atheist, you know. And he's saying so. You know, that kind mm-hmm. of a thing. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So he, he kind of bounced around a lot. He went to Ireland and tried to, like, rabble-rouse him into, like, armed rebellion against the English government. Nice. You know? Couldn't be that difficult. Yeah, well... <laughs> He was like, guys, you got to pick up guns. And they were like, man, I'm not listening to this fucking kid. You yeah. know, they'll get around to it. Don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you worry. Um, about a hundred years too early, but yeah. Well, I mean, everyone. I know. It. Yeah. He, he was also a sleepwalker. He sleep, <laughs> he, he sleepwalked a lot, a lot of his life. And he would have like these notorious nightmares. Mm-hmm. And he said he had visions, like waking visions too. Mm. I don't know how true any of this is because for the romantic poets and like the romantic writers mm-hmm. this kind of stuff is what made you a romantic you got your ideas from divine inspiration yeah. mm. or or from visions and nightmares also you know, known like as that is romanticism lying right, right. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't well, like, get it from you know when people are like oh like you know uh, yeah. this era is romanticized yeah they're fucking lying yeah, it's yeah, lying yeah it's lying mm-hmm. yeah, they're lying yeah. it uh, wasn't like that well like poe was like the only romantic era writer to be like no it didn't come to me in a dream i outlined it and wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> more I actually worked that really yeah it was yeah. way more pro- he was the only one that was willing to admit that it didn't come to him through some nightmare or dream or right. vision you know right. <laughs> well it was because poe was just a shitty bullshitter <laughs> poe yeah. was great uh but uh Percy basically, like, he embodied, like, he was the romantic era incarnate, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And he was second generation by now, you know, Mm -hmm. from Coleridge and and, uh, Woodsworth. But he was that. Just Mm -hmm. everything that was the romantic era was distilled into Percy Shelley. There's another person I think of when I think of that. Oh, uh, yes, we're going to get to him. I don't want to bring him up because I know he's going to be He's coming up. You know who I'm talking about. Oh, yes, to a different degree. Yeah. To a separate degree, yes. Um, He also... Percy Shelley also had a misdiagnosis of tuberculosis. Oh, so he didn't. He wasn't consumed. No, mm. but he thought he was. Mm. I'm he thought he was. <laughs> he's like he's like Charlie Kelly when he's like, I got to touch a consumption. Yeah, he's like Charlie. Yeah. I've been poisoned by my constituents. <laughs> <laughs> he's just puking blood. That is probably one of the funniest. I, that's so one of the funny. funniest scenes and one of the funniest shows of all time. It's so unexpected. Like when he <laughs> just like an throws egg in this up. trying time. <laughs> yeah. He throws up gallons of yeah. blood. <laughs> He ate too um, many of those bloated caps, capsules. <laughs> he ate them. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> Percy also liked uh, sailing, even though he couldn't swim. We talk about this in our Essex episode. Mm-hmm. The fact that like people that were really into sailing at this time didn't also know how to swim. Mm-hmm. Um, Fucking Kind of crazy. That's what wow. they got the idea for uh, One Piece, you know? Is it? Yeah, because one dude can't swim. Uh, oh, Monkey D. Luffy. Because if you eat the devil fruit, you can't swim. I've seen like the first episode. Mm. Don't don't start. It's gonna take like twenty There's years for you episodes. to catch up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you gotta watch them on fast. Yeah, on fast motion. One point yeah. five. Yeah, yeah, just have it yeah. beamed into your head. <laughs> That's how you gotta do One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to do uh, it. That's the only way to do it. He also liked pistol shooting. Like cool. just like he he was the type of guy. You know, he liked really brash emotional things. You know, you respond with your emotions really brash, really fast, passionate. Type, mm-hmm. type things, you know what I mean? You would Just do things a on the win. for funsies. Yeah, yeah. Chaotic yeah. neutral personality. Chaotic, yeah. Or, yeah. or, or chaotic, chaotic good? good, maybe? Chaotic, chaotic, chaotic neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chaotic neutral. Yeah. He was, he he was set, setting things on fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> set the butler on fire. Yeah. 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 But he was romantic about it, so I'm neutral, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like neutral. I'm saying neutral. Uh, but the thing I about him... Neutral. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not changing it. <laughs> I'm like, no, Maddie. Yeah. Chaotic no. neutral. No, yeah. no, no, no. No, 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 no. The thing about him was that he 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 wrote poetry and he wrote extremely well. His poetry was really fucking good. You know, even mm-hmm. as a young man, very good. So mm. he got kind of noticed, but it didn't really go further than that, right? He was still sort of a rising star. He couldn't really he hadn't really hit gold yet. He hadn't written the one you know, yeah, mm-hmm, that right. really shot him into stardom, mm-hmm. like others, you know. He wrote some other things during this time that I think are is uh, really fantastic. I'm going to read you just a little bit of this one. 
It's called Men of England. Mm. It's it's fantastic. Actually, it's it's fairly short. If you just indulge me for a second. Men of England, wherefore plow for the lords who lay ye low? Wherefore weave the toil and care which robes your tyrants wear? Wherefore feed and clothe and save from the cradle to the grave? Those ungrateful drones who would drain your sweat, nay, drink your blood. Wherefore bees of England forge many a weapon, chain and scourge, that these stingless drones may spoil the forced produce of your toil. Have ye leisure, comfort, calm, shelter, food, love's gentle balm? Or what is it ye buy so dear, with your pain and with your fear? The seed ye sow another reaps, the wealth ye find another keeps, the robes ye weave another wears, the arms ye forge another bears. Sow seed, but let no tyrant reap, find wealth, let no impostor heap. Weave robes, let not the idol wear. Forge arms in your defense to bear. Shrink to your cellar's holes and cells. In hall ye deck another dwells. Why shake the chains ye wrought, ye see? The steel ye tempered glance on ye. With plow and spade and hoe and loom, Trace your grave and build your tomb, And weave your winding sheet till fair. England be your sepulcher. And that was the birth of UK grime. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like communism to me. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, this is why, uh, you know, Karl mm. Marx would like Percy Shelley yeah. later. You know? I bet they didn't like that. No, no, that was really radical. Mm -hmm. People did not like that. He scandalized England even before he oh. even met Mary Shelley mm -hmm. or Mary Godwin. Yeah. You know? Don't you, you got to understand the hierarchy of where people are. Are there. Because that's how God wants it. Yeah, yeah. And the king is sent by God, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And he's cool, right? <laughs> the king or God? Uh, one of the same, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the same. Uh, big fan. Big, big fan. In, in 1810, Percy Shelley ran off with a, a girl. Cool. Named uh, Harriet Westbrook. She was 16 years old. Nice. How old uh, is he? Uh, let's see, 1810, born in 1795. 15. 15. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. No, 15, I think he's 16. 14. But he, he ran off with her. Uh, she was from the same boarding school that his sisters went to. And they ran off in this sort of romantic, oh my goodness, we're going to leave. Uh, you know, kind of deal. Love. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Lots of over-the-pants action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was 19. Sorry, he mm. was 19 years old. Cool. And they were married. They were married because uh, they were just doing it on a whim. Like, let's get married and let's 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 go. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. They were living, he, he was living with her and Thomas Hogg mm -hmm. on borrowed money because his father cut him off um, after this happened. <laughs> <laughs> they were living in this communal thing. Like, they were like, we're going to live in this commune mm -hmm. and we're going to have free love mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to do it that way, right? No, no, you know, private property or anything like that. Oh, yeah, fuck that. So fucking fuck hippies. Yeah, yeah, there were hippies. Yeah. Republicanism. Mm -hmm. Veganism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or I should say vegetarianism because <laughs> Percy Shelley's cheese. Sorry. Per, <laughs> well, per, Percy <laughs> Shelley's <laughs> vegetarianism. Yeah, he didn't get enough protein. Yeah, he was like a skeletal dude. He didn't get enough protein. He had oh, yeah. really weird eating habits. Yeah. He, I, by the way, his favorite food, his favorite treat to have, he would take bread, like lumps of bread, mm -hmm. and then boil them in a pot mm -hmm. and steep it, and like mash it up. Like bread, mash it up, steep it in water, take it out, sort of strain it out, and then cover all of it in a bunch of sugar, mm. and just just <gasps> munch it up. Weird. Yeah, it was his favorite thing, and he he would say like, you know, I am Percy Shelley. I lap up the blood of murdered kings. Cool. You know, <laughs> as he ate it. <laughs> Wow. It's a good thing he was actually a talented writer, otherwise I know. he would be a yeah. fucking tool. <laughs> <Yeah>. Seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, this guy. He would have loved yeah. vegan chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. But he stopped eating that because the sugar trade. He was so anti-slavery that for the rest of his life, he didn't eat sugar because it was... Um, 
from the slave trade. I mean, yeah, that's mm. cool. It's from yeah, he was like, this comes from slaves. I am not for that, so I, I refuse to eat sugar. He took and, the uh, radical uh, position of being anti-slavery. Yeah, <laughs> for the time, and probably yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so. not eating sugar. I mean, you know, that's kind of a you know that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, you know, sugar is in everything. You can't avoid it now. Now it's true. Yeah, now yeah. it's in everything. So of course, Harriet became pregnant. And they had uh, their first child, Eliza. But once this child was born, their relationship deteriorated. Mm. Um, Percy... I'm seeing a, just a yeah, comment right yeah. here. <laughs> he didn't really want to be around a child. He wanted to be off being sort of a romantic hero. <laughs> Again, you know, yeah. common thread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, this kid's uh, bumming me out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, How am I supposed to live the Margaritaville <laughs> lifestyle? Lifestyle. Yeah, the exactly. Jimmy Buffett lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to find my lost shaker of salt. <laughs> this uh, isn't the cheeseburger in paradise that yeah. I was looking for. Yeah. No, that's an ideal. Yeah. That's the Plato's, like, you know, ideal, like, uh, essence. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Essence of man. Yeah, the uh, essence of man. The, the cheeseburger in paragraph. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett really hit the nail on the yeah. head. Mm. Uh, now I want a cheeseburger. Yeah. I, I always want a cheeseburger. In paradise. Yeah. Anything in paradise, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a, a Kit Kat bar in paradise is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a paved par uh, uh, parking lot. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Par yeah. yeah. <laughs> parking lots. Paved paradise. Yeah. Paving. Yeah. Something about parking lots in paradise and paving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, American colonization of Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Through mutual friends, though, he kind of got hooked up with Godwin because he had read Godwin. He was a fan of Godwin, and he wanted to go over there, you know, and be like, "All right, you know, I'm I'm one of the few that sticks with you, you know." Mm -hmm. And he kind of did, and like they 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 would meet, you know, eventually become like a daily basis that him and Godwin would meet, mm -hmm. and like, you know, Percy would opine his marriage and and you know espouses anti marriage rhetoric and be like, you know, my rash and heartless union with Harriet. You know, we can't be tied through marriage bounds, and that's ridiculous that it's even a thing. And trying to basically distance himself with his marriage with Harriet mm -hmm. because he he was like, I've made a big, big mistake. <laughs> 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 right. Right. Deal. You know, as a dang old whoopsie daisy. Yeah, and he thought you know Godwin would would back him up mm -hmm. on this, and Godwin's just like, eh, yeah, well, he's a young man, I suppose. You yeah. know, <laughs> he kind of wrote it off as that for a while. Word? Yeah. So he kind of became Godwin's disciple. Godwin in encouraged Percy to patch things up with his father uh, so he could basically get that money every month, right? When you mm. get noble blood, you know, your your rich daddy just gives you a bunch of money every mm -hmm. month, yeah. and that's what you live on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when he was cut off, he didn't have that, you know, so he could get the money. And then I think Godwin just was like, now why don't you patronize, patronize me? Mm -hmm. You know, so I could have money so I can write. Because I can't write if I'm working in the bookstore all the time, mm -hmm. I have to be able to write. Right. Know? Yeah. So, Percy was now giving money to Godwin. That's a as scam. As like patronage. Wow. Yeah. Patronage is a scam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and remember, Godwin was a fucking anarchist. Yeah. Just, the proto-anarchist. Yeah, yeah, just scamming people out of money. Much like the folk punk kids that you see that are, you know. Yeah, the crust punks. The, oh my god, the crust punks, my god. It's like uh, the the only thing that suburban white kids didn't gentrify was the homeless. Yeah. <laughs> Until they started doing that. It's yeah, they all like, have Jesus crust Christ. Punks. Yeah. Cell phones and scabies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good. An abused uh, dog. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I was thinking that too. Yeah. yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great crust punk album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as you know, Percy was seen around the Godwin house more and more often. He came into contact with Mary, and Mary was sixteen years old, and they fell in love with mm -hmm. each other right away. You know, here's this roguish, you know, in her mind, this mm -hmm. roguish you know, good-looking, you know, messy-haired, romantic mm. poet, mm. you know, that has defied conventions, like her mother, you know, sort of espoused, you cool. know, like, defy conventions, fuck them all, do what you want, you know, that yeah. kind of thing, right. you know, uh, he's doing that, and she's really drawn to that, and so they, yeah, they, they fall in love, uh, even though he's married, she didn't 
see Harriet anywhere, so she figured, uh, I don't know, maybe it's on 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 its way out. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have deep conversations about philosophy and Wollstonecraft and literature and poetry and all of these things. Mm-hmm. And she took him to her sacred place, which was her mother's grave. Mm. And it was here that she told him for the first time that she loved him, oh. proclaimed her love. And people are like, did they make love on yeah. Mary Wollstonecraft's <laughs> yeah. grave? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, isn't it the whole legend that uh, they That's fucked? That's the legend. Up? Right. Probably not. And here's the reason why. It's cold. <laughs> no <laughs> the complicated undergarments of the time is, oh, yeah. is one of them oh. uh, the other fact you wouldn't just do that in public mm-hmm. especially in broad daylight you would not do that in public mm. you know that just is not a thing mm-hmm. probably not is is the but they can't say yes or no yeah uh, most people think probably not yeah right. but they can't say no because Percy Shelley's in the mix mm-hmm. so, so there's a possibility <laughs> right. yeah. life finds a way right probably not though and and we'll teenage see teenage boys find yeah. a way yeah, yeah. yeah. True. teenagers yeah <laughs> so at the very least uh, Percy finger blasted her <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about, you know, yeah. being a teenage boy yeah. and, you know, looking at at, at a grave <laughs> <laughs> that belonged to... Everyone's got to die sometime. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, they thought Godwin would be cool with it. He was not cool with it. For for one thing, Percy was already married. Uh, that wouldn't look great on his own yeah. daughter. Right. Yeah, this married guy banged his daughter on yeah. his, ex, his, <laughs> his <laughs> dead wife's <laughs> grave. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why was he? Why didn't he just be stoked on that? Yeah. <laughs> I'd well, be a little salty about that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you really think about it, though, it's like you know him and Mary. They went through a lot together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With their circumstances, mm-hmm. and he knew that, and he didn't want that for his own daughters. Mm. You know what I mean? He didn't want them to. You know, he he did want them to carry on the ideals of Wollstonecraft, but not live it in this way. Not live you know the worst I mean? parts of her life. Exactly. Right. Yeah, he didn't want that for them. You know, right. and I think that's what he was trying to, you know, protect her from. But she's a sixteen year old girl. She's not gonna fucking listen to her dad. Yeah. <laughs> Even if he is an anarchist. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. That sounds yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So he banished Percy from the house and forbade Mary from seeing him. Oh, mm. that's what you don't do. That's what you don't do. Because yeah. that, she'll only want him more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And Percy wrote her love letters. Aww. He wrote her a bunch of them. I'm going to read you one. Was he pretty famous at this time, Percy? Yet? Not, he, he was known if you okay. were in the right circles, you know, but not like, Famous, famous. Yeah, it wasn't like Justin Bieber coming over. No, your, no, no, coming over to your teenage daughters. <laughs> that wasn't like another guy that we'll talk about here. Soon. Here, here's one poem. Percy's got it bad. Yeah. Here, here, here it is. Is that the name of the poem? <laughs> <laughs> it's called "To Mary," but he wrote multiple ones. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. That's a different one. Here's the shorter one called "To Mary." Oh, Mary dear, that you were here. With your brown eyes bright and clear, with your su- and your sweet voice like a bird, singing love to its lone mate in the ivy bower, bower disconsolate. Voice the sweetest ever heard, and your brow more than the sky of this azure Italy. Italy, right? Mm. But it, sometimes the accent doesn't make it rhyme. Just letting you know. Anyway. Right. <laughs> Mary dear, come to me soon. I am not well whilst thou art far, as sunset, as sunset to the shepherd moon, as twilight to the western star, thou beloved art to me, O Mary dear, that you were here, the castle echo whispers here. Mm. Cool. Wow, as a 16 right. year old girl to get that, that's like a dream. Right? Didn't yeah. help. Like, only only your middle school boyfriend ever wrote you shit like that. <laughs> Am I right? right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh man. I mean, yeah. it certainly didn't help that the pages were kind of sticking together. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. Thinking about our time on that. Yeah, it was actually. <laughs> It was actually a bit longer, but those pages, you're not going to get that apart. He wrote multiple ones. I, you know, there, there's another one that's longer, but I'm not, I'm not going to read that one. 
there were multiple. And she, of course, you know, oh my goodness, she fell for this, right? Mm. Yeah. Percy being Percy and them not allowed to be together. He broke into the house one night with a drawn pistol, demanding to see Mary. Scaring the house guests, or the, the, the house help, by the way. When they forced him out of the house, he went home and, like, despaired and, like, took an overdose of laudanum. And, like, almost died. Mm -hmm. And, like, his stomach was pumped. You know? So dramatic. Wow. Very dramatic. Very dramatic. Wow. Yeah. That's every, yeah. That's, this is like a teenage girl's wet dream. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he? It like, really he is, is. He is your middle school boyfriend. Oh, my gosh. He's going to come into my house where my dad doesn't want him to come with a gun because he wants me so yeah. bad? Are you <laughs> <Right>? kidding? <laughs> All right. Then he's going to kill himself? Yeah. So yeah. then he's gonna, he can't be with me? Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is like, this is like next Twilight. level. Mm. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. He had messy hair too. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's he he's very much hair. like him yeah. in a lot of ways. That's actually not bad casting. He was very yeah dramatic in the movie. Oh yeah. He did. I love Robert Pattinson. Try to kill himself actually after they yeah. broke up. In yeah. The movie. See. Is that true? Very yeah. Percy Shelley. Yeah, yeah, he basically he's basically Percy Show. Yeah, could be her inspo, Stephanie Meyer. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> like honestly, do we know yeah. if uh, Percy Shelley ever said "Hold on tight, Spider Monkey"? <laughs> <laughs> he was a better writer than that. <laughs> <laughs> he's a better writer. Uh, so in July of 1814, Percy and Mary hatched a plan to elope. Cool. And run away to the continent. So on July 28th, 1814, Percy would show up in the middle of the night in a carriage to whisk them away. Mm -hmm. Right? So she got up in the middle of the night with all of her things packed. And there was, she was supposed to just go into the carriage and that would be that. Mm -hmm. But when she woke up that night, Jane was up. Mm. Oh, Jane. Shit. And Jane was like, you're taking me with you. Mm -hmm. And like, she's like, no, I'm not. And she's like, I will start screaming right now if you don't take me with you <laughs> oh god <laughs> what a bitch so jane went with them becoming history's probably history's most famous third wheel <laughs> 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 uh they took her took her with them and then in, instead of just getting into the cart mary like she she had this like second thought and she ran back inside and she dashed off a quick note to her father like i've run away i can't just say nothing mm -hmm. you know and then she got in the cart Mm -hmm. They took off. And their plan was, like, to rush rush to France. They're going to mm -hmm. go to France because they had read about the revolution and they were, they were you know, idealists and they cared about republicanism and all the things that the French Revolution was. Mm -hmm. So that that's where they went, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when they got there, though, they realized that the French people were tired of war. Yeah. <laughs> that their country had been ravaged by war. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, cattle was slaughtered. You know, there were just desolate places. People did not care anymore about republicanism and these high ideals. So they were kind of disillusioned with France mm -hmm. right off the gate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to their surprise, like the place that they were staying, Mary Jane showed up. And she was like, I don't care what, you know, you two do, but right. give me my daughter back. Yeah. Like, yeah. give me Jane back. And she Jane really shouldn't have come. Yeah. And <laughs> Jane refused. Jane refused to go. So Mary Jane went back to England empty-handed. Mm. Um, she wanted to be to be a part of the throuple. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Weird. Yeah, it is kind of <laughs> odd in that way, isn't it? It's just crazy to me that even back then, in, in those old-timey times, that there was a like a, a culture shock of going to to France. I'm, I'm assuming they went to Paris and they had like this idea of how romantic and yeah, well, idyllic it, it was going to be and then they just see that it's all fucked up. Yeah. People still <laughs> suck over there. Um, cuz <laughs> Napoleon had lost. Right. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was going to lose here quick, you know. But yeah. like it, it's just fascinating to me cuz I, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this but uh the Japanese embassy in particular has uh, a hotline for Japanese expats in Paris, who uh, 
who are so disillusioned that it like breaks their brain. Yeah, I've heard of that Paris oh, wow. syndrome. Yeah, Paris syndrome. Yeah, yeah it's fucking oh, nuts. Wow. So like to to hear that Paris syndrome was was a thing essentially yeah. back then. I actually was thinking the same thing when he said that. Yeah, that, yeah. about Paris syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that absolutely. Like, yeah, and it, yeah, predominantly happens <laughs> to the Japanese. I think mm. something about there's a total culture Weird. clash. Where there, I think that the way they perceive Paris to be France to be yeah drastically different, and I think that. Uh, you know the cultures between the French and the Japanese are so drastically different. It's probably hard to yeah. for them to, yeah. you know. They need to make more uh, Japanese movies about talking about how French people are assholes. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we get plenty of those yeah. in exactly. America. We're like we know it. Big great expect. anime. They're assholes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, their whole thing is like we're gonna go to the land where you know cunnilingus is happening all over the place, <laughs> yeah. all the time. It's gonna be. Gr- Oh, it's just a uh, there's a, there's a homeless guy taking a shit right on the street. Mm-hmm. Am I in wanna... Seattle? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns out they only want to fuck other French people. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not them. Yeah. Yeah. Now by this point, you know, Percy had some money that they could live off of, uh, but the rest had really kind of been tied up with Godwin and his uh, his estranged wife Harriet, you mm-hmm. know, and his child and harriet by the way was pregnant at this time with mm. percy's child because he kept going back and forth you know mm-hmm. so she's pregnant she, she's been abandoned you know what i mean mm-hmm. and he's off gallivanting with you know mary godwin and and jane claremont you know <laughs> he actually did invite harriet to geneva to switzerland when they when they went through there because they were planning on leaving France because they were mm-hmm. like fuck this yeah fuck this shit so they're gonna go to to Switzerland because Godwin had written about Switzerland and now the Swiss are a noble people yeah, even though meet, he had never been there they're gonna meet a stranger in the Alps <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> and he probably only really invited Harriet so she would bring his money with her right but yeah yeah totally <laughs> but again he was he was a proponent of like free love and let's all live in a communal like yeah. crazy free love society and, and English society heard about this right heard about this elopement oh yeah oh my god they went you know they, they ate that shit up they, they were like oh this uh-huh. is so scandalous you know that they, they would do this oh my goodness yeah you know and like one time when they were like by a river like Percy liked to, to skinny dip you know but he encouraged Mary to do it you know, like, what? What? It's just us. <laughs> and Mary was like, fuck yeah, off. I'm not going to get naked for you. Like, Come on, show me them babe. titties. Like, no, fuck you, dude. <laughs> you know, not for your own enjoyment. But Jesus you're Christ. you're real square. Yeah. Wow. Do you approve? Yeah. 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 <laughs> While he's sitting there, dick flapping in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> so they went from Switzerland, after they heard nothing from Harriet, because, yeah, they went to Germany uh, from Switzerland. And You're like, so that place sucked. Yeah. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, it turns they, out every place sucks. Well, they were just running out of money. Yeah. They didn't have a lot of money. Every time they would get a room or something, Percy would spend too much. That like, about right. I'm going to get the lavish room. He, I mean, yeah. He's a noble. You know what I mean? Mm. He can't live like. You know, I can't live like you fucking poppers. Yeah, but he was one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No. Oh. So they went to Germany and, like, right away almost, they were like, fuck this. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's go back to England. You what? know? Well, here's the th- like, and on their way back, by the way, this is a great story, and I have to, ha- you know, totally have to mention this. But uh, they went by a German castle, cool, the real castle Frankenstein. Ah, Ooh. the inspiration, of course, for Mary's most seminal work, mm-hmm. right? And they paid a guy, a guy that was just out and about. They paid him like a, I don't know, a quarter, whatever it mm-hmm. was back then, you know, whatever the coin was. To tell him a story about this place. He's like, I got a story for you. And they were like, oh, great. Let's hear it. And he goes, there used to be a man that lived in that castle who was an alchemist and Mm. conducted all of these experiments to bring the dead back to life. Mm. You know? And they were like, ooh. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It was very cool for them. So she stole the idea from that. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. Well, she bought it for from for a nickel. It was the inspiration. It was the inspiration. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, inspiration. What's uh, the what, what's the old adage? Uh, uh, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
but we're gonna get to we're Fucking gonna get there. We're gonna get yeah. there. I promise. We're like gonna Carlos get Carlos Mencia. Yes. It's not Frankenstein. <laughs> is not a Carlos Mencia <laughs> situation. Do not no, equate the two. Do not equate the two. Uh, do not. Do not. But something else that was big at the time. <laughs> Putting the line in the sand. <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, don't fuck with Frankenstein. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh. uh Something else that was big at, at the time, especially with, with them, because they were really into science, was galvanization. Mm. And that is when you basically took like either like a dead frog or like a piece of like meat with like the tendon in it, and you hooked it up to electricity, and it moved on its own fruition. I thought it had something to do with rubber. Yeah. It moved on its own, you know, so they were like, wow, it moves. Like, like you know, willingly. It brings it back to life. Right. Electricity. Yeah. No, it's just... Yeah, you know, it's shocking the tendon and moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't know that yet. Oh mm. shit. Yeah, <laughs> but it fascinated. It fascinated her. So those two things stuck in the back of her mm-hmm. brain, basically, mm. uh, on their way back that makes sense. to England. Uh, they went back to England by way of of Holland. This time, instead of going back around, they just they went that way. Mm-hmm. Even though it was more expensive. Yeah, because um, they they're way. like, fuck the, <laughs> fuck the Alps, frankly. <laughs> yeah, well, while we're at it. I yeah. don't want to talk about the stranger we yeah. met there. And I I'll didn't talk tell anybody. About that. That's why he's not in the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, they got back to England on September 13th, mm. 1814. Your birthday. My birthday. Yeah. I mean, not the same year, but. No. You were born that year. No. I'm saying. No, I was not alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a twinkle in your dad's eye yet. No. Just not not even a few generations around back in a ball twinkles. sack yet. <laughs> 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 anyway. So meanwhile, as they were gone, Fanny bore the anger of her stepmother. Uh, bore all of it, basically. Mm-hmm. Without mm-hmm. Jane or Mary to be around. She kind of took out all that on Fanny. Mm-hmm. And Fanny being like the quiet, meek one, you know. And so it wasn't great for her. She fell into a state of deep depression during mm-hmm. this time. Fanny? She felt, yeah, she, yeah. She felt totally alone and abandoned. That's understandable. Um, well, I mean, yeah. She wasn't yeah. Her, her dad's favorite mm-hmm. at all. She certainly wasn't her stepmother's favorite. And then the, remember the Wollstonecraft sisters? Mm-hmm. Eliza and Everina? Mm-hmm. They were still alive. <laughs> And mm. they were like, hey, we can l- let us take care of Fanny. Mm. And Godwin was like, no. No. And they were like, fuck you. Yeah. And, by and the he's way, like, fuck you. Yeah, and they were like, by the way, fuck that memoir you wrote about our sister. <laughs> and they were like, and he was like, fuck you. So they didn't like each other. <laughs> <It was like, laughs> yeah. They didn't like each other. They're correspondents. Fuck, go fuck yourself. <laughs> fuck you. <Yeah. laughs> so Fanny was in kind of a hard place. You know, she loved her sister, Mm -hmm. but, you know, her sister didn't want to tell her everything about her and Percy because, well, she didn't want, she didn't want Fanny to tell Godwin, Mm -hmm. right? And Fanny, well, she felt a loyalty to her dad Mm -hmm. because that was her, by now, because Mary Jane fired like Marguerite and all those other house people that she grew up with. Mm-hmm. So now she's totally alone. Her only connection is with her father. Yeah. So she either has her dad or her aunts, and she's kind of stuck in limbo between the two and her sister and her father in this point. So she's kind of alone, really. Right. By herself, you know. She doesn't really know what to do. So she's burying all of this while they're away, you know. And so when they get back, they're penniless. You know, totally shunned by society. And Mary was pregnant. Mm. Nice. So we have an issue here. Mm -hmm. Godwin won't speak to to Mary, Mm -hmm. you know, which breaks her heart, you know. As she's pregnant, too, Percy kind of starts spending more time with Jane. (laughs) And they go off by themselves a few times, right? And they're off doing their own thing. And Mary's like, what the fuck, you know? And it's because she's pregnant, you know? Mm-hmm. And they almost certainly, we don't know for sure, they almost certainly had some kind of sexual relationship, mm-hmm. right? Oh, absolutely they did. Yeah. And at one point, even, Percy takes Jane and uh, puts her in the in, in the country. In the corner. In the country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Away from everyone. <laughs> and people usually did this at this time if mm-hmm. somebody was pregnant out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. So they could have their child and deal with it mm-hmm. and then come back, right? Right. Whatever that is, whether she 
called a midwife and had an abortion Mm -hmm. or gave it to someone else Mm -hmm. or what, or even if she was pregnant at all, we don't really know, but she would come back later. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's sort of happening simultaneously as as what we're going to talk about next. Mm -hmm. So my head cannon on, on the, the series of events that occurred. Mm -hmm. So he finds out that Mary's pregnant, right? Starts shacking, like hanging out more and more with Jane. And then he's like, Hey, come over here. There's this pretty sweet grave that I need to show you. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't have worked on Jane, but she would she the thing is is Jane was so jealous of Mary for having this mm. romantic poet. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, that she wanted that too. She wanted to have sex you know. with that poet. Well, yeah, and she always wanted to be more like Mary. Mm. You know, she wanted to be the smart one. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 one that was rebellious and and Jane started to see herself more and more as the real heir and torchbearer to Wollstonecraft. She's like, I'm wow. I'm the real because you know what? I'm the I'm, real deal. I'm brash. Mm-hmm. I am an impulsive. I am I am the romantic era in incarnate. Like like Percy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm more like that. Jane or or, or Mary is more subdued, dignified, mm-hmm. quiet. Mm-hmm. That's not romantic, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she saw herself as this. And this is why Jane started calling herself by her middle name, Claire. Mm. Claire Claremont. Uh, because, you know, in French it means you know, clear and mm. all these things, you know, Claire. So she she's, by this point, we're going to start calling her Claire. Mm-hmm. That was her name from now on, Claire. Okay. Claire Claremont. So Claire you know, goes away and then she'll come back and there's this push and pull between the sisters. At this point, Mary does it does not like Claire. Because <laughs> mm. you spend mm. a lot of time with Percy, right? So there's that going on, right? Percy was dodging creditors because he never paid his debts. Yeah. So they would move around a lot, sometimes in the middle of the night. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> to get away from people, you know. Like, we've heard a lot of stories similar to this lately. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just uh, Charlie D's uh, you, daddy. You got to get yeah. away from. Yeah, just stay out of debtor's prison. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, Mary kind of had to deal with all of this while she was pregnant. During this time, while she was pregnant, Percy's son with Harriet was born, mm. and he was happy he, to have a son. Mm. And she kind of had to deal with that. Was this he, the, him being happy? This was with the initial son. pregnancy. Or was well, there he, already had a, he already had a daughter with Harriet. Okay. Right. This is his yeah. second child with Harriet. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I as he was meeting Mary. There's a lot going on here. He had, I like, know. three pregnant women potentially like at once. Yeah. yeah, three pregnant women uh, potentially at once, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep track of General Hospital. Though. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a soap opera. Yeah. You know, it's a soap opera. And, you know, he was really happy that he had a son, and he was spending all this time with Claire. And... So, uh, you know, because he believed in free love and all this stuff, he brought along his buddy, Thomas Hogg. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, Mary. (laughs) T-Hogg. Thomas Hogg over here. What about him? Mm. Maybe you two, huh? Yeah. And she was like, no. Ew. No. And, like, Thomas Hogg, like, tried to come on to her, and she was like, no. Yeah. I'm in love with (laughs) Percy Shelley. Okay, Thomas Hogg would uh, shotgun beers and then crush them on his forehead. Yeah. He's like, there's a reason they call me Hogg. <laughs> I can't stop thinking of him as being like some, like, the like gross fat guy in yeah. the uh, fraternity. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. like, <laughs> in the 2017 Mary Shelley movie, he's like a really good looking dude. Of course. Yeah. I would never saw him as a good looking dude. I, yeah. Every woman that Percy tried to hook up with Thomas Hogg, they've all been like, no. There's a specific actor I'm thinking of, but I can't remember his Poor name. Guy. So, yeah, he's that I picture. I just imagine Thomas Hogg uh, introducing himself as Thomas the Hogg. <laughs> Hog. yeah. His name was actually Thomas Jefferson Hogg. Hmm. Thomas Jefferson Hogg. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> she didn't like Thomas Hogg. Although she did keep in correspondence with him, I think because Percy was so unavailable. Mm-hmm. I think that's why she did that's it. That's kind of his signature style. Mm. Yeah. Now, on February 22nd, 1815, Mary gave birth to a two-month premature baby girl. Mm. Not expected to live very long. Her name, if she had a name, is lost to time. We don't know what they named her. Because ten days later, the baby tragically died. Mm. She actually wrote Thomas Hogg, which shows sort of the distance between her and Percy, mm-hmm. and the fact that she was reaching out for really anyone, mm-hmm. and it wasn't Claire or Percy, and so she landed on 
Thomas Pretty Hogg. much grasping at straws there. Yeah, she, she wrote him an ang- anguished letter talking about the child being dead. It's it's heartbreaking to read. I'm not going to read it for you now. But she, she talks about, this is the gist of it, that she awoke in the night to breastfeed the the baby. But it was, it was sleeping so soundly that she just left it. Mm-hmm. And then in the morning, she came back and the baby was ice cold. Just dead. Ugh. And what had happened is that during the night, probably moments before uh, Mary came in that night, the baby had gone through con- through convulsions mm-hmm. and had died. Probably right then. Probably mm-hmm. right before she walked in. And she talks a lot about how cold the baby was, mm-hmm. you know, and how much it affected her and how she'd have nightmares about it. Like how she would wake up in the middle of the night and like pick the baby up and then put it in front of the fire and like warm it and it mm-hmm. came back to life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like these... That's really I can sad. feel it, you know, like, oh sad. my God, it's sad, mm-hmm. you know. She slipped into a, a major depression, and like, her whole life, Godwin would tell her, like, there's a, there's a, a Wollstonecraft, like, proclivity, and it's to kill yourself when you're depressed. Mm-hmm. And he would always tell her, like, I don't know when it's coming for you, mm-hmm. but when it does, please don't. Mm-hmm. Think, of, mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. everyone that cares about you. And she was there, basically, at this point. Yeah. And didn't, because she remembered those things. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Claire, who was away, you know, her and Percy, the way they mourned their child's death was very separate. Uh, They mourned very differently. Mm -hmm. Percy's was very outward, and he would get all out kind of a thing, and then he'd be okay. Mm-hmm. Whereas Mary's was more quiet, more subdued, and, and lasted much longer. Something that Percy could not understand. Mm-hmm. He couldn't understand why she couldn't get out of it. It's like, yeah. I miss her too, but like, come come out of like, it. get over it. I know, I know. It was like six months ago. He couldn't understand. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Everything happened so quickly for these, these poor yeah. people, you know? For real. Uh, so Claire, always being jealous of what, uh, you know, her and Percy had, she wanted to be you know, whisked off her feet by a romantic poet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And she wanted Don't we all? I know, right? (laughs) And not a moment too soon. Mm. England, and indeed Europe's most notorious man, came back to England, his Mm. his home. A man dubbed by an ex-lover as, quote, mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Mm. End quote. And was scandalized for his dalliances with women and men across Europe. His provocative sexual depictions in his poetry and his title and his noble blood and his lavish, reclusive, and eccentric lifestyle made him irresistible to everyone, even though this scandal followed him everywhere he went. And that man's name was Lord Byron. No. Oh shit! His his poetry was very romantic as well, but his poetry was more like these Byronic heroes. Mm-hmm. You know, they, these I mean, guys, <laughs> these guys that. The name. They, I mean, there's a name for it, but, yeah. but like <laughs> these guys that would like, you know, go it's, off to sea, and like you know, through nothing for nothing else than for glory and and uh, cool. you know to find like these the uncharted areas and and seek the unknown and like these. These really ambitious, sort of, very romanticized yeah. things. That that was Byron, right? Yeah. This sort of man's man, machismo romantics, romanticism. Yes. Right? That was Byron, mm-hmm. right? Percy loved it. No, he right? ate it up. And he was a, you know, Byron was a celebrity, you know? Percy was barely anyone, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so when Claire was like, hey, I hooked up with Lord Byron, he was like, the fuck? This could be, this could be great for my career. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he thought, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was like a cartoon. He sees dollar signs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. The eyeballs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And well, the, they'd be pound signs to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. True, true. <laughs> the way Claire found her way into Lord Byron's company was kind of strange. She she like found out where he was going to be camped out there, sort of inserted herself into his company, right? Mm-hmm. And Lord Byron writes about this later. You're going to understand in the next episode their 
relationship a little bit more. But uh, he would write about this later, and he goes, like, this is not a direct quote, I'm not going to look it up, but he, he basically said, like, when a young girl calls on you at all hours of the night asking for it, a man is a man, and there's only one thing that, that needs to be done at that point. Mm. And it's like, what a fucking dick. <laughs> 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 oh fucking asshole. You just tell her to go home. <laughs> you know, like, come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're not into it. And he really wasn't. Like, he mm. was happy to have sex with her. Oh, yeah. But, like, he didn't want a relationship or anything. Not mm-hmm. like what Mary and Percy had. Yeah. Right, he, and he even told her like, "Look, I'm not really looking for like a relationship right yeah. now." <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, "The band's gonna k- kick yeah. off," you know. Yeah. Well, and when he said <laughs> that too, like Claire like threw her her like hail mary pass, and mm-hmm. she was like, "Oh, my sister, my stepsister is Mary Wollstonecraft's daughter, and uh, you know she's with the poet Percy Shelley." Mm-hmm. And he had heard of Percy Shelley, but he was a fan of Wollstonecraft. Mm. And he was like, okay. Tell yeah, me more. I can work, I, I with, can work this. with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree to meet them. Kind of a deal. He finally hands her the towel because she's <laughs> sitting there waiting for him to... <laughs> oh, <God>. Dear Lord. <laughs> and that's how I imagined this whole conversation was going. It was post-coitus, and he has the towel, and he's about <laughs> yes. to give it to her. He doesn't and, give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't give it to her dick. just yet. <laughs> She's like, like what? gotta wait till she, to see what she has to say. Like, oh, wait a minute. Wollstonecraft. Yes. Here's your yeah. towel. Throws it on her. Yeah. Butt. What a yeah, just tosses, <laughs> it. tosses it. Clean Walks yourself out up. of the room. <laughs> what a dickhead. Yeah. I eat my dinners by myself. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't put that past him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he would do this, like, he would always, like, keep her waiting, too. Like, mm-hmm. like, be, like meet me at 7 o'clock in front of my house or whatever so she'd show up and wait there for like three hours that's power and he'd Jesus finally Christ. show up Star like drunk as fuck with like three other chicks <laughs> what an asshole <laughs> seriously that's ki- that's the kind of guy he was yeah wow. yeah <laughs> you see now the towel thing makes sense oh yeah like, I can see it honestly, happening honestly something that something that crossed my mind while reading about Lord Byron was uh Rasputin. Oh, yeah. Mm. But his drinking and his lusting. Yeah, the song, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The song, yeah. And lusting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boney M. Boney M. Yeah, exactly. Ra Ra Rasputin, lover of the Russian yeah. queen. Yeah. Cries for doing something about this outrageous man became louder and louder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, she was like, yeah, come come meet them. And like she showed up back, back in London where they were. And she was like, Byron is coming. Byron is coming. And, like, she, like, basically for, like, a few days sat by the window, like, looking for Byron. Mm-hmm. And, like, I hope he shows up. Because there was always a chance that he would just, like, be like, Pfft. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. That's so pathetic. But he did. He did show up. Mm. And he knows how to just dangle the carrot just enough. Yeah. He sure does. Just break uh, yeah. uh, Now's the time to look, like, yeah. 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 get a little nibble Give of the carrot. Give him just enough yeah. attention, <laughs> yeah. 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 In between this time, Mary Shelley's, well, Mary Godwin's diaries are gone for this year, 1815 to 1816. Basically, the summer of each year, her diary's missing. So we don't really know. But what we do know is that she had another son. Mm. She had another child Mm. um, named William after her father in hopes of maybe rekindling their relationship. Mm. Maybe so Godwin would take her back. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, they called him Will Mouse, William, William Shelley, or I Will guess, Mouse. Will, yeah. Will they Mouse. They called him Will Mouse. That was his nickname, Will Mouse. Yeah, I think it's kind of a cute name. Was he? I mean, yeah. Unless he kept that as he got older. <laughs> well, it might not. It might not be. Well, does anyone keep their childhood nickname as they grow grow older? I, I didn't know. have a childhood nickname. I don't know. I mean, maybe he became a SoundCloud rapper and, and turned it to <laughs> Lil, Lil Mouse. Lil, Lil Mouse. Yeah. Lil Will Mouse. <laughs> yeah. And it was also during this time in which uh, Percy's grandfather died. So he got a pretty decent inheritance. Cool. Right? Yeah. So he had some money, which was good for the first time in a while. Lord Byron was coming. You know, this celebrity was coming, you cool. know. And he had a new son. You know, and that was a thing, right? 
And it was good that Percy had this inheritance because his poetry wasn't really selling well, you know what I mean, at, mm-hmm. at this time. The way Percy saw it is with, you know, in between Harriet, Sir Timothy, Godwin, the scorn of English society, and of course his creditors that were chasing him all, all the fuck over the place. Mm-hmm. He wanted to get the fuck out of England anyway, mm-hmm. right? So when Claire said that Lord Byron, you know, like he met them for you know, briefly, but when 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 she said that like, oh, Lord Byron's going to invite all of us to to Geneva, to mm-hmm. Switzerland, to stay with him during the summer of 1816, right? Percy agreed wholeheartedly. Like, oh my God, we get to stay with you know the great poet. This is going to be great, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. He can, he's already feeling the noose tight, and he's got yeah. to get the book out. <laughs> yeah. And Mary, who has a newborn mm. and is still getting over like her dead child, yeah, she's less enthused about dropping everything and going to fucking Geneva, mm-hmm. you know, to gallivant with this fucking character, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And because of this, is this 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 is a very legendary trip. This trip to Geneva, mm-hmm. and that is why we're going to save that mm. for the next episode. They're going down there for a bit of a convention for part two. Yes, no shit. <laughs> part two <Yep. laughs> of Mary Shelley. Well, there you go. So there you go, folks. Fucking a. Indeed, indeed. I like how big assholes these guys are. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's pretty hilarious. It doesn't get uh, any better. Yeah. It does not get any better. You've seen the best of them. (laughs) (laughs) You've seen the best. (laughs) Yeah. The best of their best work. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. Yeah. And and folks, it it goes downhill, let me tell you. It goes downhill real quick (laughs) from here. Yeah. I I have questions, but uh, they'll be answered next time. They will be. Or I can just check the Wikipedia. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. They won't give you the full story. Not I've like seen you it. do. I've looked at it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Not like we, the history boys, do. The, the, no. We're the always Wiki- giving you the Wikipedia full story. doesn't even give smart out al- smart aleck <laughs> remarks. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Should. It Told does. jokes. If I had anything to say about Told it. Told jokes about dicks and. Oh, dicks yeah. and poop. And butts. <laughs> dick pun. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of cum jokes today. I put a dick yeah. putt. Yeah. I put Period a dick blood. butt jokes. sticker on my <laughs> water bottle. That I, you know, dick butt, you know, that old thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's funny. Oh, I bought it from the guy who made it. Uh, who wrote, had created dick butt. When I, when I was at Disneyland, I saw a guy in a shirt. It was like a Vaporwave t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And all it said was poo-poo pee-pee. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's F- like fucking a Fucking fantastic. That was like the funniest shirt I've ever seen. That's great. <laughs> well, I guess we know what to get you for uh, for your birthday. Yeah. Poo-poo pee-pee. Poo-poo pee-pee is the height of comedy. It's so funny. Poo-poo pee-pee. They've been making jokes, dick jokes, and they've been doing that. It's tale as old as time. Yeah, you know? indeed. Angela yeah. Lansbury. Yeah. yeah. She's a big fan of uh, big dicks. Fans. Shit. Uh, poop and pee. Yeah. Oh, poop poo Anyway. poo poo pee pee poo poo pee poo Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Anyway, that is our episode. Indeed. Uh, on Mary Shelley. There will be right. more of that. Yeah, or as she is in this oh, episode. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to call it Mary Shelley. Yeah, you know but it's Mary she's Shelley. she's not Mary Shelley she's yet. Not yet. She's Spoiler alert. Godwin. Right. Yeah. 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 It's only happened like 200 fucking 50 years ago. Yeah. I don't know when. Yeah. yeah, 200. Well, well, the thing is, is people know like, you know, oh, they had this crazy getaway with Lord Byron. Mm-hmm. That's where Frankenstein comes from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they don't know the whole story. Yeah. Right. And sometimes people have really silly beliefs on what happened in mm. Geneva. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to clear all that up for you. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, Geneva, that's when she uh, met up with Mel Brooks. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for listening. I am Christopher Whedon, and signing out, I am a history boy. Indeed. I'm Zach Mack, and I am still a history boy. But not as hungover. Okay. Ah, yeah. He's drinking the whole I, I, I can't. Yeah. January second, I'm gonna or February second, I'm gonna be so fucking hungover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thursday. Probably still it's drunk, Thursday. to be real. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Maddie Moon, and I am a history boy. And I'm Jerry Nash, your humble history boy, as always. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, join us for uh, part two. Our 
technically part three of this series, but part yeah. two of, of, of uh, Mary Shelley. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about everything we have planned for you. Also, uh, you know, if you have social media still, you want to keep on Facebook and Twitter, even though it's a all a cesspool. Godless fucking hellhole. Uh, <laughs> if you're still on there, follow us. Follow us. Just do it. I don't just fucking. I don't do fucking it. know just anymore. Do just do it. it. Uh, yeah. If you don't want to be on those uh, for pennies a day or for a dollar a month, you can be on our Discord oh, and yeah. you can talk to us there. It's a lot big of fun. time. Yeah. Um, and about anything. And about anything. Uh, history uh, is the main topic, of course, but about anything. And for five dollars a month, you can get uh, the first month of what we do on uh, Patre- Patreon. And then it goes into the vault. And then $10 a month, you get the whole vault. You get the whole dang thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's all of that. Um, the, the Our Patreon listeners, we love so much. They keep this whole thing going. They buy books for us. Mm-hmm. They buy beer for us. Uh, they do all of this stuff that keeps our show going for you. And we do love all of you as well. Even if you are one of those lurker yeah, uh, listeners, we love you as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys are are what makes the fucking show happen. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't make it if no one listened. Yeah, yeah. we're an indie yeah. operation for fuck's we sake. We are. We for are. Sure. So, like, we we really do appreciate everything. Leave a fucking uh, five star review. Indeed. That's super helpful for Helps us. A lot. Yeah. Doesn't cost a dime mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially if you're using your coffee shop's internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're stealing an internet from your neighbors. That's fine. Do it. I'm all about it. Do it. Yeah. Log into... Not everybody has a password. Just log into their Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Or, or guess like, you know, yeah. one, two, three. Like all, all the... All the Password know, real one, two, easy. Three. Log yeah. into your neighbor's Wi-Fi and change their password. Yeah, to your password. Yeah, now it's your Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Life hack. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much as always, Mr. Zach. Love you. Bye. Next time, or I guess we want one.